Hey ho, right, um, we've done nouns, now it's time for some pronouns. Um, I hope, hope this image isn't getting too dark as, as night falls outside and, and uh, the studio lights of, uh, of, I don't know, Alaric Studios um, have to start to come on. Um, yeah, anyway, um, pronouns I'm hoping are going to be quite quick. Let's see how quickly I can do it. I've done this video once already and I took ages. Right. Pronouns, very similar to nouns. Um, pronouns are words that are standing in for a noun, like I, you, he, she, it. Those are personal pronouns. And we've also got uh, another category of pronouns which correspond to that and this, which we call demonstrative pronouns. Um, I'll come on to those in a moment. Um, I don't think there should be anything to really mess with your head here. We have Normative, accusative, genitive, and dative, and they sound an awful lot like pronouns in modern English. Itch means I, mech means me, mean means my or mine, and me means to me, from me, by me, with me, from me, over me, under me, through me, beside me, uh, off me. Okay, um, that dative form. Um, itch, mech, mean, me. Normative, accusative, genitive, dative. And, um, and you can do that with your, um, your we and your thou and your you, um, thou in the singular, you in the plural, thou, the, thine, the, um, thou, there, thin, there, etc. Um, and we likewise have he, it, and she, um, masculine, neuter, and feminine in the third person, just like English, or uh, well, just like modern English. Um, so hopefully you're okay with that. Hopefully you're okay with the idea that they all have normative, accusative, genitive and dative. Just like I hit him, he hit me. Itch, oh dear, what's itch, sloch, um, hinna, he, sloch, mech. Itch, sloch, hinna, he, sloch, mech, mech. Cool. Um, so nothing weird there. Just one little weirdness with the personal pronouns and that is that you'll see that you have singular itch, I, plural, where, we, but also dual. Um, what's this dual? Um, it only occurs with first person and second person pronouns in Old English. Um, you don't have it for third person pronouns, you don't have it for nouns. Um, and it's when there is not one of you, and not many of you, but two of you. Um, so uh, if I'm walking to the shops in Old English, I'd be itch, whilst walking to the shops. If I and, um, and you and one of my friends um, other friends, was walking to the shops. Um, that would be three of us, so it would be plural. Where was walking? Where were, sorry, where were walking to the shops? We were walking to the shops. But if there were two of us, just me and you, it would be wit were walking to the shops. Wit unk unker unk. If two dogs came and, well, no, let's have one dog. If one dog came and attacked the two of us, just two, only you and me, the two of us, we two, us two, if the dog came and attacked us, two, two, um, it would be the dog came and attacked unk, not us, and not me. Okay, so that's the only little weirdness for the um, first person and second person personal pronouns. And then we have these demonstrative pronouns. Here they are, lurking in the corner of the magic sheet. Um, they correspond, as I say, to that and these, and this and these in modern English. Um, Old English is a bit funny for modern English speakers in that you don't have um, a definite article. You can't make the distinction between a boat and the boat. Or at least you can't in the same way that we do in modern English. You just put boat and the reader has to just kind of work out for themselves. I wonder if you can see that. I might put it down here. Okay. Um, reader just has to work out for themselves from context whether it's the boat or a boat. Um, but you can say that boat and you can say this boat. Um, so that's a way of kind of sorting out that problem. If you do that, then the word for that, I wonder if that's visible on your screen, it might not be. Let's put it up here. There we go. The word for that, I've got the modern English form up here, has to change to agree with the boat, with the word, that, with the noun that it goes with. 
um, in terms of its number, gender, and case. So just as in English, you can't say that boat, you have to say those boats. In Old English, you'd have to not only make sure that you've got the right number, singular or plural, but you've got to make sure that you've got the right gender and that you've got the right um, case. In this case, we would say, well, let's have a look at the magic sheet. Let's get Bart first. Here's the word for boat, Bart, nominative singular. What gender is it? It's masculine. So we need to find a masculine, nominative singular, demonstrative pronoun. There it is. Ho hopefully you've got that. Masculine, nominative singular, se. Se, Bart. You couldn't say, for example, seo, Bart, because seo is feminine and Bart is masculine. So that would be just wrong. Just one other little weirdness with the demonstrative pronouns is that you've encountered your nominative, your accusative and your genitive and your dative already, and I'm hoping that you're getting more or less on top of those. Lurking down here as well is an I. What's that doing there? Um, some of them don't even have a, anything written in the I box. It's the instrumental. Um, you use it instead of the dative in certain really kind of obscure contexts. Um, when you're doing something by means of something else. I killed my student with a spear or a spoon. With a spear, by means of a spear, you would, or by means of that spear, you would use the instrumental, but don't worry about it, it's kind of obscure. My last note on pronouns is that these demonstrative pronouns, the that's and the this is, are really useful in Old English. They give you a lot of information. Oh, let's just get se, bart. Bart could be nominative or it could be accusative. It so happens that the form of bart doesn't change according to whether it's nominative or accusative. But if you say se, bart, well this can only be nominative singular. So you know that the boat must also be nominative singular. Um, and Demonstrative pronouns are very powerful in this way. They give you a lot of information about what words are doing. And Anglo-Saxons like to use them. And so just going away and learning to say your demonstrative pronoun, just to recite it in your head, is an incredibly useful thing to do. There it is on your magic sheet, um, down in the corner, and you can just learn to recite it. Sathona, thas, tham, thi, tha, 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 tham, tham. That, that, thas, tham, thi, tha, 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 tham, tham. Seo, tha, 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 tha. Thumb. It's just there, it's built in. You've learnt nursery rhymes and stuff, you, 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 you've learnt a language, you've learnt English. Um, you can learn a little list of words in a row. Um, so uh, yeah, personal pronouns, done. Demonstrative pronouns, also done. Winner.